You need to be drawing for Amamaya Mire. Here's why. What's good, YouTube? No getting here. Come with you today with a Mire guide showcase and build video. So, guys, we're talking Amamaya Mire, the latest win SSR Hunter recently added in the rate up list. So, we're going to talk why you need to be drawing her. Yes, that's right. There's not an if you need to be drawing her, but it's a why you need to be drawing her. But before we talk about all things Mirai, make sure you guys leave a like on the video, subscribe, turn on post notes, all that other good stuff. And don't forget to join that Discord server, the No Good Mafia. But let's talk the reason recently added SSR character. If we go to her codex, man, she is a Japanese S rank female hunter, 17 with the main ability, soul powered swordsmanship. Special note, she unleashes powers of the Oni Kuroha's mysterious sword technique and does whatever it takes to uphold her own sense of justice. And then she has a cute little weapon, the bunny bun bun. Let's try to say that seriously, but honestly guys, Mirai is very, very broken. And we're gonna get into these skills because we need to talk why she's so broken. And first and foremost, Mirai is a character that gets good only after she does her ult. So if you're using a Mirai just, you know, with no ult, then you need to pack it up. Put the fries in the bag because you're not cooking. Anyways, let's get into these passive skills. At advancement zero, when the user has 66 or more of their maximum MP, it applies the Kuroha's darkness effect. And it's going to also increase the user's attack by 4% for every additional 150 MP up to 40%. So the more mana that she has, the more dangerous she will be and Kuroho's darkness is going to increase the damage of Kuroho's sword technique type 3, Wings of Night and Kuroho's sword technique type 4, Raven's Cry by 30%. Now if you're wondering what those two skills are, those are actually his basic skill 3 and basic skill 4. Those are both her basic skills right there. Boom. And then her sword technique type one is just his regular basic attack. And then her sword technique two is her core attack. So one, two, three, four in that order. But let's keep talking about the passives, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, A0 is pretty cool. But once you start getting more advancements, then we get into the meat and potatoes. Now for my free to plays, pay attention. You should draw her for at least advancement one. And here's why. While the possessed effect is active, and if you're not familiar, the possessed effect is when she goes ahead and throws on her mask. And we can talk about it a little bit. Like I said, guys, Mira is a character that gets buffed after she uses her ultimate. So with this in mind, you need to be upgrading her ultimate as well as high as possible. Um, I probably wouldn't upgrade the ultimate as this high because really it's just a transformation and you really get your money's worth when it talks about the basic skill one and the basic skill two, right? And then not to mention just regular basic attacks i probably need to get this even higher but i'll probably wait till i get some more hunter scrolls not to mention the core attack so i would actually upgrade basic skill one basic skill two basic attacks core attacks and then maybe the ult but like i said the ultimate is just a transformation this does 15 33 damage so it's not a lot right and that was just a quick little side note, but let's get back to that advancement one. The possessed effect is whenever she throws on her ultimate. So speaking of the possessed effect, let's just go back here. The possessed effect, when that's active, it increases the user's critical hit rate and critical damage by 20%. When the user uses her type three, so her basic skill one, wings of night, while possessed, it applies the deep darkness effect. What this will do, it'll increase the user's attack and critical hit rate by 12%, and this will stack up up to two times so you're already getting a critical hit rate buff and damage of 20 percent just by being possessed or using her ultimate but when you guys are using her basic skill one it's gonna give her an increase of 12 more percent on the crit hit rate and then an increase of her attack by 12 percent and then this can stack up to two times so we're talking a 44 percent increase potentially to the crit hit rate alone imagine if you already have a crit hit rate build on her and she's already has maxed out crit 50 percent minimum and you're using maybe egress whatever the case may be she basically will hit crits on almost each and every one of her skills imagine that guys and not to mention a 24 percent attack potential this is just very very insane i think you all can agree on that and if we're talking our advancement too, this one is good. Charges the power, the user's power gauge by 40% when entering the stage. And if you don't know what that means, that means literally just going into a mission. So whether it's encore, instance, story mode, workshop, Entering the stage will charge the user's power gauge by 40%. So she relatively will have her ult super, super, super fast. What I like to do, if you do have her advancement too, any QCE would basically put you at a good spot. If you also have her weapon, the bunny bun bun, 
charge the user power gauge by 50%. This is an advancement for when the user enters the stage. It also will increase the critical hit rate and critical hit damage of her basic skill one and two by 25%. Again, at advancement four. If we look at this at maybe advancement one, we gotta go all the way to the codex to find that advancement one. We go under weapons, we go here. At advancement one or advancement zero, actually, it's a 10% power gauge charge and then 5% on the critical hit rate and critical hit damage so you definitely want to get that weapon as high as possible i only have an a4 because usually i can get a5 by just doing the special dice but that's the reason why it's not a5 but i'm looking to get that a5 definitely a thousand percent let's go back to mire though we're talking advancement two so well now advancement three when the user uses the basic attack or a core attack it charges their mp and power gauge by one percent and decreases the cooldown of the Kuroha sword technique lethal move moonless night over torture or over her by uh two seconds but first off she has long technique moves all right but <laughs> anyways basic skill one and core attack that's gonna get you some mana back so go ahead and eat off that i didn't mean to rhyme there but yeah like i said guys this is kind of insane because using skills usually will drain her mp and by the way her possessed effect does drain her mp it consumes three percent of the user's max hp every three seconds over 25 seconds deals additional damage for proportional to 20 percent of each attack and then not to mention you're going to be using your basic skill one and your basic skill two so it's going to drain even even more hp and when she tags out or has 10 percent or less of her mp it will remove the possessed effect so you can't just ultimate and then use me right for the entire battle she will drain on mp quite fast so keep that in mind that advancement three kind of negates that it'll get you some mp back by using her basic or core attack so that's something to keep in mind now this advancement four is broken 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 i don't know what the hell netmarbles think with this advancement four i actually do know what they were thinking they were thinking hey let's get this wind meta going because advancement four will increase her wind damage by 10 percent for every wind member in the party stacking up to three times so it includes herself so if you have a full wind team talk wujin shul talk any type of wind support that they might add in the future maybe park and Mirei, she can get a 30% wind damage increase. Now, this would be even more crazy if she increases, you know, the entire parties. That way, Sun Jinu can eat off that. But of course, you know, it might be too early to introduce some crazy, crazy, crazy things like that. Advancement 5, while possessed, the user gains Raven's Confession effect. What this will do, it will increase the damage of her basic skill 1 and basic skill 2 by 80% absolutely stunning absolutely insane advancement five 80 percent is just ridiculous so she's been hitting for us and if you're wondering what's the best way to build here this is the build i currently have on her now this is an early build right i'm rocking b set on the right half curse half black lion but let me explain curse effect of course guys you should be already well versed in the half sets that comes with curse you can either two piece burning curse or you can eight piece burning curse there should be relatively no reason to four set burning curse or half setting that with black line getting that nice five percent attack increase while also using the good old b set it's always reliable and she's getting a lot of hits in and mind you if you have her at higher advancement she's going to be critting a lot so you can take advantage of that by adding the b set and getting even more attack stacked onto her now i do think there are better sets that you can work with her i'm talking about the warmonger set now if we look across the board i only have one warmonger set in general but i do think that you do want to four set this on the left so a four set warmonger and i'm going to take this off for the video even though we're down bad on that gold but a four set of warmonger on the left and then on the right side we're talking again a new set we're talking the obsidian set now hear me out hear me out we're gonna half set this with burning curse so we're not giving up on the burning curse not just yet we're going to go ahead and four set the obsidian sets and four set the burning curse set why because on the left side when the user attacks and they they hit their attacks their attack and defense will increase by three percent for six seconds and this stacks up to eight times so she can potentially be looking at a 24 percent 
damage increase. That is insane. All right. That is insane. That is insane, man. I personally wouldn't two set this because two set doesn't really do much. I mean, the two set is worse than black lion. So if you only have two, you might as well throw on black lion set. And then on the right side, this is insane, but don't get me wrong. I do want to force set this, but I can't find a way to get rid of Burning Curse, man. Burning Curse is just a great set that you need to be rocking, guys. If we talk Burning Curse, man, you can definitely two set this, half set this, or maybe look, if Outstanding Ability comes out to be better, then you can definitely, definitely, definitely just go ahead and do four set. But I think the passive when it comes to Burning Curse about the damage increase over X amount of time does come into play. So that's why we're two setting this. Go ahead, get those artifacts on or you can put on that OG artifact that I just had on before. But there's a lot of more combos that you could combo up with. But this is the best sets that I personally would use for DPS. Now, let's talk about the best ways to use her. Now, I might want to get her some artifacts, but the shadow that I probably would use for her, again, Egress or maybe Blades. She's not really a core attack spam, so the boy Tusk doesn't really get a lot of shine there. But let's get into this. We'll get into the tactics. So I can ult pretty much right out the gate. And that's what we love to see. You can see it's there. It's just blinking. And again, usually with the bear, I don't ult, but I pretty much have to here. Now, what I do, you know, kind of want to note is that you can use your basic skill one and your basic skill two before ulting, and it's going to reset like a Choi ult. Now, if you just notice, we just did 20% pre ult. She's going to do a lot more damage now. So look at the bear going into his berserk mode. We can even hit our basic skill twos but here we are here we are here we are she is just a broken dps and i love her basic skill one because it teleports behind the opponent and the bear is eviscerated in some 20 seconds so honestly the best way is to go about using mirai go ahead and ult first spam that basic skill one spam that basic skill two get those basics in she's a very easy character to use and a very broken character to use as well so with that in mind, what do you guys think of the new character, Amamaya Mire? Leave your thoughts below and we're at it. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, turn on post notices, all that other good stuff, and join that Discord server, the No Good Mafia. And with that, I am out. Y'all take care. Peace.